Hi, everyone. Welcome to our educational webinar on liquid handling. I would like to introduce you to two of the members of our technical support team, Nancy Nardone, product specialist, and myself, Stephanie Franco, product manager for life science and automation. With that being said, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Nancy. Hi, everyone. In today's webinar, we'll be discussing some of the tools available for handling liquids in the micro to low milliliter volume range and review how each instrument works, as well as what application it's best suited for. We'll also discuss automated liquid handling systems. The first tool we'll discuss, air displacement pipettes, are used in many labs and for a wide variety of applications. They really are the workhorse of the lab and are available in volumes ranging from 0.1 microliter up to 10 mils. As the name implies, it is a column of air that does the actual work of moving the liquid with these instruments. The piston in the pipette moves the air column, allowing liquid to be drawn into the disposable tip and then dispensed out. With an air displacement pipette, there should never be any direct contact between the liquid and the pipette or piston. If liquid is drawn into the pipette for some reason, the pipette must be cleaned before further use to maintain proper performance and accuracy. Because these types of pipettes use a column of air to move the liquid, they are best for handling liquids that have physical characteristics similar to water and are very accurate when used with proper technique and a properly fitting tip. However, the further the physical characteristics of a liquid differ from water, such as its density, viscosity, or vapor pressure, the less accurate the pipetted volume will be. Air displacement pipettes can be either manually or electronically operated. Manual pipettes, such as the Transfer Pet S, are available in both single and multi-channel models. Single channel pipettes can be fixed or variable volume and can range from 0.1 microliter to 10 mils. Multi-channel pipettes, most commonly 8 and 12 channel, though other sizes are available for specialized applications, generally range in variable volumes from 0.5 microliters to 300 microliters. With manual air displacement pipettes, the piston movements are controlled by the user. The pipetting stroke has two stops. In standard or forward pipetting, the first stop is for aspirating and dispensing, and the second for blowout. Variability in the volumes dispensed with an air displacement pipette depends on several factors, including pre-wetting tips, the depth and angle that the tip is immersed in the liquid, the aspiration and dispensing speed, as well as the wait time before blowout. Motorized or electronic air displacement pipettes are also available in both single and multi-channel models and in a wide range of volumes. The single channel transfer pet electronic, for example, offers volumes from 0.5 microliters to five mils, while the multi-channel, either eight or 12 channel, ranges from 0.5 microliters to 300 microliters. Other models available may offer volumes up to 1,250 microliters. The advantage that an electronic air displacement pipette offers is that because the piston movements are controlled electronically, user-to-user -user variability is minimized. They also reduce the amount of operating forces required during pipetting and significantly reduce the amount of repetitive motion required. It should be noted that while it is possible to dispense partial volumes or multi-dispense with an electronic air displacement pipette, and most electronic models do offer this function, multi-dispensing cannot be performed accurately with an air displacement pipette. For accurate multi-dispensing, a positive displacement pipette should be used. Positive displacement pipettes, in contrast to air displacement pipettes, do have the liquid in direct contact with the piston of the instrument. 
This difference allows for greater accuracy with liquids that have a wider range of densities, viscosities, and vapor pressures than can be pipetted accurately with an air displacement pipette. Liquids don't have to be similar to water in their physical characteristics to be pipetted accurately with a positive displacement pipette. However, because the liquid does come in contact with the piston, in order to prevent carryover or cross-contamination, the tips must be rinsed between samples. The tips for a positive displacement pipette are reusable, but they take more time and effort to change. They are also more costly than the disposable tips used with air displacement pipettes. And with some positive displacement pipettes, the piston seal will wear over time and must also be replaced. Positive displacement pipettes also provide accurate dispensing of partial volumes. So if accuracy is required when multi-dispensing partial volumes, a positive displacement pipette is the correct tool for the application. The Braun Transfer Pateur is an example of a manual positive displacement pipette. It is a useful tool for dispensing viscous or volatile liquids that cannot be accurately dispensed with an air displacement pipette. It is available in volumes from 100 microliters to 10 mils. The tips and piston seals are reusable and the piston seal is designed to push the liquid entirely out of the tip, minimizing carryover between samples. However, as noted previously, changing the tips and piston seals is more labor intensive than with air displacement pipettes. So this is a tool that is chosen only when needed for those more challenging liquids. Another type of positive displacement pipette is the repeating or stepper pipette. This is a special category of positive displacement pipettes that is specifically designed to handle multi-dispensing of partial volumes accurately. Since they are positive displacement pipettes, the liquid comes into contact with the piston of the tip used with the pipette, providing accurate dispensing of a wide range of liquid types. Manual repeating pipettes typically have a fixed number of intervals that they can dispense, traditionally 50, each representing 2% of the nominal volume of the tip. The user then would select between one to five of these intervals for each dispensing or step, giving some flexibility in the dispensed volume. More advanced versions allow for the addition of half intervals. For example, the Handy Step S can dispense 59 different volumes, ranging from two microliters to five mils, depending on the size of the tip used with the pipette, using nine step settings. Manual repeating pipettes are very simple, reliable tools that offer accuracy and convenience at an economical price point. Electronic repeating pipettes, such as the HandyStep Touch and Touch S, offer much more versatility than a simple manual repeating pipette. They offer more flexibility in volume setting and more options in functionality. With an electronic instrument like the HandyStep Touch or Touch S, it's possible to perform auto dispensing, sequential dispensing of different volumes, multi-aspirating of different volumes, and save favorites. Also, because the piston movements are electronically controlled, there is a wide range of speeds for both aspiration and dispensing, which is helpful for liquids that have a tendency to foam or bubble. And of course, an electronic instrument reduces strain due to repetitive motion, which can be an important consideration when repeat dispensing for long periods of time. So that covers the most common tools for handheld liquid handling. Now I'm going to turn over the presentation to Stephanie to have a discussion of automated liquid handling. Thank you, Nancy, for the excellent explanation of air displacement and positive displacement pipetting. So now that we've talked about manual and electronic handheld devices used to move liquids, let's talk about automated liquid handling. Liquid handling automation differs from handheld pipetting in that it uses a robotic system to move liquid from a source to a destination. 
Automated liquid handling systems includes a wide range of instrumentation from robots that take up very little space to those that can take up a whole room. Some systems, like the Braun Liquid Handling Station, use air displacement liquid ends, which are suitable for many types of liquids. They have the ability to reproducibly compensate for liquids that would be a challenge with manually operated instruments. However, you do want to avoid chemicals that may be damaging to the materials and components of the instrument. The volume range for pipetting robots can range from nanoliter to milliliter volumes, and sources and destinations can range from something as small as a PCR tube to a 96, 384, or 1536 well microplates. For larger volumes, you can use reservoirs that may hold up to, say, 240 milliliter capacity. Additionally, you will find a wide range of system structures. Some systems are not enclosed, but this can pause pose problems for sample as well as user safety. Other systems, such as the Braun Liquid Handling Station, are enclosed for enhanced sample and user protection. Traditionally, robotics in the lab have been reserved for highly repetitive and extremely high throughput and complex procedures. However, systems are now available with a wide range in size and capacity that makes robotics available and sensible for even low to medium throughput procedures. So what are the benefits of using automation for liquid handling versus using manual or electronic handheld pipettes? First off, installing liquid handling automation in your lab can offer tremendous benefits for time. It will free laboratory staff from having to do menial and complex liquid handling tasks and allow them to focus their efforts on more productive work, real lab work. Automation allows you to control liquid handling and processes repeatability by removing user variation. This benefits your lab by not having to repeat experiments due to different technique amongst your laboratory staff. Also, by having a predefined process, you will limit experimental failure due to procedural error. I think it's fair to say that everyone has had the, oops, did I put that liquid in that well or not moment? In addition to time, accuracy, and repeatability benefits, Liquid handling can be beneficial for the safety of your samples as well as your staff. An enclosed pipetting robot will offer your samples protection from the environment, and the robot does the physical work of repetitive pipetting so you don't have to, thus reducing your risk from repetitive motion injury, keeping you at full productivity. Protocols can also be optimized for time, reagent, and consumable usage. And since it's electronic, it can be um, a lot easier for sample tracking and process recording. Bond offers two benchtop automated liquid handling systems, the LHS and the LHS Flow, with integrated HEPA filtration. Both have eight positions with seven working positions and are compact, being about a two-foot by two-foot box. These systems can work with a variety of consumables, such as PCR tubes or plates, 96 and 384 well microplates, and reagent reservoirs, just to name a few. The volume range is one microliter up to 1,000 microliters with three single-channel liquid ends and two multi-channel liquid ends. These systems are great for PCR setup, serial dilutions, and more, and are super easy to use. Method creation is done with a graphical interface, meaning no programming knowledge is needed. In addition to the box, there are various accessories and consumables that can be used with the LHS, including liquid ends, liquid end holders, racks to hold tubes or PCR plates, adapters that bring all of the consumables to an even height for the most efficient pipetting process. There are also waste box, reagent reservoirs, and tips, whether they're filter, non-filter, sterile and non-sterile, or any combination of those. Heating can be controlled with an optional heater shaker, and the cooling of PCR tubes and plates is conducted using a PCR cooler. In summary, you have been presented with a large array of equipment for liquid handling. Which tool is right for you? To answer this question, review the five key questions for liquid handling decisions. What is the liquid to be transferred? How much will you transfer? Where will the liquid come from? And where will it go? Finally, ask yourself the frequency of transfer. This chart summarizes all of the key features of the different types of liquid handling devices. The manual micropipette is the workhorse of the lab. This is the go-to instrument for most people. 
With volume ranges from 0.1 microliters to 10 mils, it can handle a lot of tasks with a lot of different liquid types. Electronic pipettes can be used to increase reproducibility of manual processes, and repetitive pipettes can be used for repeated dispensing of small volumes. Finally, if you see your laboratory with increasing throughput liquid handling needs, you may consider a switch to automation. We would like to thank everyone for attending our webinar. We do offer product demonstrations of all of our products. Um, all you have to do is just let us know. Um, you can reach us by contact, contacting us at support at brandtech.com. Thank you.